Excited to welcome in our next guest, Laura Rutledge of the SEC Network, and of course ESPN joins us now. Laura, how are you doing today? I'm great. Thanks for having me. Glad to have you on, and I've got to imagine, for you, you were traveling all over the place, not only in the fall, but around the year, in New York, in different spots, and going to Bristol and doing hits there. So right now, doing everything from your home, it might be a little bit more normal than anybody else's case in the fact that you get to actually stay home with your family. Yeah, I mean, look, you know, I, I wish that we were all um, able to carry on normally and this thing had never happened as, as we all wish. But I am thankful for the fact that I'm getting a lot of extra time with my daughter, Reese, and with my husband. I mean, Josh and I were laughing the other day. We're like, golly, we, we haven't spent this much time together in years or maybe ever. So <laughs> you find out some things about each other that you didn't know. But, the double-edged uh, sword there. It's a dangerous <laughs> game you're exactly. playing, Laura. <laughs> has been you know i'm thankful for that and I, I am very thankful to your point that you know a lot of my work I'm, i am able to still do from home and we've got great technology to kind of keep making that happen so I, i've got to know this have you had that one moment where you've tried to use the new technology and it hasn't quite worked out because i told you before we came on the show so our sirius xm show we're actually trying to record it and we can't have producers in dc right now and so they're trusting me and cole kublik <laughs> to get on the air, to record the show, to be on time, and to, as well, take phone calls from some of these biggest coaches in the SEC and big personalities. And with Frank Martin from South Carolina, I absolutely had to work through that process. So have you had that moment yet, or have you just done it flawlessly? Oh, my goodness. I've been the opposite of flawless. And, and here's the thing. I mean, for you, you can just blame everything on cold cubic, but yeah. I really don't have anybody to blame it on. I'm, I'm just blaming it on myself. So, um, yeah, in fact, there was a particularly funny story the other morning with uh, doing radio. I was supposed to be on with Marty and McGee the whole time, and we have, you know, the Comrex radio technology. And so I had set the thing up, and I thought it was all good to go. And then I get downstairs at 5.30 a.m., and it's not working and i'm like caught up in about 17 wires and i'm like yeah. unplugging stuff i unplugged the entire internet uh you know i think i was setting off the alarm system in the house and i mean you know josh my husband was asleep but i thought golly he's gonna wake up and be like what under the sun is she doing down there so it's <laughs> like one thing after another with that like I, I think i cut the cable line i i, I don't know what happened right. I'm, I'm sorry josh <laughs> Talking to Laura Rutledge, uh, one of the busiest, just like like Jacob alluded to, Laura, you were all over the place. Whether it was like being on Get Up constantly, SEC Network, uh, your workload was incredible. And and I have to ask you about this. Uh, my wife works full time, runs small business. We're about to have our second daughter next Tuesday. You had a daughter in the fall. What was that? What was that experience like being a a new mother working? through the pregnancy, finding your way to work afterwards. Like how have you managed to kind of do it all? Well, first of all, congratulations to you guys. That's Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Very uh, excited. Definitely. We'll be sending uh, thoughts and prayers to you guys, especially <laughs> with, you know, everything going on right yeah. now. Um, but no, look, I mean, I, I feel really fortunate to have, first of all, a husband who was willing to be very helpful through all of it. He's of course balancing his own career and then, you know, families really helped us out because I, I came back to work uh, three weeks after having Reese just yeah. because I wanted to go and be at LSU. And that's really like the, the absolute truth of it. I knew that SEC Nation was going to LSU. Wow. And I was like, I can't miss it. I got to wow. go. Um, I was, I was kind of targeting the week after that to come back, but I thought, no, I've got to, I've got to go ahead and come back now just for that reason. So, you know, look, it's, it's a situation where I think, you know, for everybody, oh, there goes the dog. Yep. Um, <laughs> for everybody, you kind of have to have your own way of dealing with that. And, and for us, that's what was important to me. But um, look, you know, I, I also kind of looked at all this and said, if I were to do it again, I might say, I'm going to take a little more time off and, and focus on the baby. <laughs> Being that it was my first one, I really didn't know, you know, how else to to handle it and, and what would be the right thing. But um, the other thing, too, is we were like, man, next time we got to plan a little better and not have the baby, like, right in the middle of football season. <laughs> uh, but th th those are the things that are less important than the actual fact of, of having a child and focusing on what matters. I do think everyone learns that lesson, though, because we had our first, and we have four boys. We had our first during Jeez. football season, and we had it the week, or the week of game day 
opening week, we're about to go to Oakland. So I had to leave my wife after our first one the next day to travel to play Ooh. the Raiders there. So we did learn our lesson as well. The next three definitely were off season <laughs> babies. So uh, you're not alone there. Catching up with Laura Rutledge here on Hanging with Hester. Laura, everybody that we've been having on, we've kind of asked the same question. What is the one thing that got canceled or postponed that you've missed the most? Because I'm telling you right now, SEC baseball to me is something I am jonesing for. We don't have that. I know, obviously, your husband played for Alabama, so SEC baseball is near and dear to the Rutledges there. So what is that one thing that you're missing the most? Oh, my goodness. I mean, there, there's so many. Look, I, I think for me, you know, I, I would obviously say baseball. I would say softball, too. I love college softball and um you know, SEC softball for sure, but just the, the Women's College World Series, that entire tournament and just the lead up to it. Um, but even before that, guys, I, I would say the NCAA tournament and March Madness. I'm not sure if there's much better of a product in all of sports than March Madness. And this year specifically was supposed to be so up in the air. Yeah. Like, we had no idea what was going to happen. And, and so I think from that standpoint, you know, there's a lot that I miss, um, you know, just even from watching that. It, it's so weird. I was talking to somebody earlier today about this. It feels like it's been years since we've had normalcy. And it's really yeah. been like four weeks, you yeah. know? Um, a little and, scary. And just, right. And I just can't help but, but think, obviously, everybody's health and safety most important. And, and I'm constantly praying for that for everybody. But whenever we can get back to normal or at least a new normal, which we will, it's just going to mean so much more to all of us. We're just going to appreciate it so much more. Oh, I think like even this year in the NFL draft, I think the 174th pick, we are going to be dialed in <laughs> like it is the first round pick for your favorite team. I don't think there's any question about that. Oh, yeah. Which, by the way, there's nothing else going on, so it's even more a reason to be that way. <laughs> like every single thing is going to be matter so much. Yeah, the NFL knows what they're doing, keeping the league year as is. Right there, there, there is a vacuum right there, and they're all too willing to fill it. And, and I'm happy for it because it's all we're going to talk about. No, I love it. I, I'm I, look. I am all for everybody's, you know, safety, safety and health. Like I said, but. If we can do a draft, like, let's come on and do it. And it's, it's going to be a lot of fun. It's been a lot of fun even just to talk about and just, just to have something to talk about for all of us who are just sports fans and want to talk about sports. And not that we're ignoring what else is going on in the world, but just an excuse to talk about something else is, is a welcomed excuse. All right, so which team is Laura Rutledge paying attention to in the NFL draft? Because obviously we're here in Baton Rouge. We've got a ton of of Saints fans. I think I'm the only Chargers fan in South Louisiana, maybe in all of Louisiana, oh. because that's where I spent my career. Do you have a team that you're going to be watching, making sure you're rooting for? Well, so I'm from Atlanta, so the Falcons uh -oh. would be my team. Uh, but here's, let me just say this, though. I say that because I, I have to be honest about where I'm from, but the Falcons, I, I didn't really grow up like a huge Falcons fan. So, in fact, I've been to more Saints games than I have Falcons games. Um, and I'm not even sure why that is, other than the fact that, like, the Saints are just so much fun and the Superdome's fun. So, um, from that standpoint, like, I root, when it comes to NFL anything, I root for players that I've covered. I root for good storylines. I root for coaches. So, um, I am not, you know, over here, like, necessarily rooting for a, for a team. But I am, however, rooting for all of these college guys that are about to take this next step. And, you know, certainly Joe Burrow's at the top of that list, rooting for Tua to end up in a good spot. All these receivers that are just fascinating and potentially a historic receiver class. Yeah. Um, some of these great defensive guys, that to me is going to be so much fun to watch on draft night and see where all these guys end up. That's something that we've talked about as well, you know, going and covering these guys and seeing them play for three or four years and getting to know their stories. And uh, we asked Reese Davis that a little bit earlier today, and he said Jalen Hurts. Like, Jalen Hurts is a guy that he's looking yeah. forward to, to seeing where he goes. We've asked a bunch of people that said Clyde Edwards Elair. So it is funny that everybody kind of has their story and their guy that they've covered for three or four years, and they're hoping they succeed at the next level. Yeah, Jalen's a great um, example of somebody who is just going to be fun to see what happens with him. And in fact, you know, all the people I've been talking to, they don't expect him to go outside the second round, which some people would have projected it much lower kind of when this whole thing started. And it's funny, guys, because even in the college football playoffs, you know, I did the Peach Bowl where LSU just absolutely throttled Oklahoma, but uh, we did meet with Lincoln Riley ahead of the game. And, and he mentioned that 
had he had Jalen Hurts for just one more year, he thought that he could have made him a significantly better passer than he already did. Like they, they had really made a lot of improvements in the passing game, and LSU was just, you know, way too uh, powerful for anybody really in college football last season. So I don't know that you look at that game as a great indicator of what Oklahoma's <laughs> passing game really could have been, but um, it was throughout the season. And people say, oh, you know, it's Big 12 defenses, but there's a lot to be said for the success offensively that Oklahoma's had. And, and I think Lincoln Riley felt like he could have made Jalen into a higher pick anyway, but now I think we'll see him pick somewhere in that second round. Um, you know, you never know, like maybe even earlier if the team really falls in love with him. So um, he's, he's one that I think is going to be really fun to watch on, on draft night as well. Talking to Laura Rutledge here on Hanging with Hester. And uh, Laura, you said your husband played baseball at Alabama. So I assume it's fair. I assume he's an Alabama fan. Is this correct? Uh, he's an Alabama fan, yes, um, which I have to stomach and deal with on a regular basis. <laughs> I know. Basis. I know. So, I mean, look, I, you, you have to live with it. I mean, we lived in that crimson shadow for just about a decade before this last year. I'm, I think how it times out, this would have been right after the birth of the baby. So, what was your, one of my favorite memories ever is watching this year's game with my neighbors in my neighborhood. The whole neighborhood goes crazy afterwards. Kids are running in the street, throwing drinks everywhere. Uh, how did y'all? How did your husband take in this year's LSU Bama game? Well, look, I mean, coming into it, and, and he's got like probably an unfair situation for him because I'm just very realistic about what's going on, and I'm covering college football as a reporter and as a host. So I'm telling him going in, I'm like, look, you know, Alabama's good, and and look, if two is healthy, then this is going to be a really good game. But LSU's just better right now I mean they're just a better team and I've watched them all year long and I've watched all these other teams all year long and he's like oh man you know when you just be quiet with all that <laughs> um but you know as it was going down it was just like very obvious that you know despite Alabama actually being in contention there toward the end of the game and, and making it a game it just LSU was just a better team on on that particular day and, and throughout the entire season and so yeah he was not a whole lot of fun to be around at that point but it was funny because <laughs> Then, you know, once it became very apparent that LSU was going to end up being a favorite for the national championship and, and definitely a favorite in the college football playoff, he started to kind of root for LSU a little bit, I think. Um, so he he was glad. It's, it's that whole thing that happens with SEC fans that yeah. like really doesn't happen in other conferences where it's like, all right, fine, if my team can't do it, then I'll at least root for the SEC team and hope that they win because uh, that at least somehow is better than the alternative. <laughs> oh, Laura, but before we let you go, I had Chris Doring, so go ahead and tell all the Gator fans, I had Chris Doring wearing an LSU sweatsuit by the end of the year. Wow. So, if I oh, get Doring to, to root for the, yeah. the Tigers, I mean, I'm doing something well. Well, yeah, and I'll say this. I mean, I really do consider myself unbiased despite the fact that I did go to Florida. Um, but, I mean, I was rooting for LSU. Like, let's be honest. It was, it was so much fun to watch this team, and it just felt like – I felt like college football needed that. We needed some team to come in that, you know, people weren't yes. necessarily talking about ahead of the season as a national championship contender um, to come in out of nowhere and, and do what they did. And look, out of nowhere is more a national perspective on this. I think all of us that have followed LSU kind of felt like, look, they're close. Like they could be there. It's just a matter of getting over that Alabama hump. And they certainly did that in, in dramatic fashion. So um, I loved it. I it was It's one of my favorite college football seasons that I've ever covered just because it was so fun to, to kind of ride this magical wave with LSU the whole year. And one of the best games in that, that, that season was when Florida came to Death Valley. The environment was spectacular. Uh, and Kyle Trask played very well. And me and Jacob have had the conversation. Kyle Trask probably the – actually, no, I think the best – returning quarterback in the SEC. Florida's got a lot going for it. How are you feeling about the Gators coming out the East, Laura? Yeah, look, um, I'm real excited for Kyle Trask. I mean, first of all, you guys know his story, but the fact that this guy was basically a backup since, like, high school yeah. <laughs> and waited it out and then finally was given this opportunity and was able to step up in a big way when his team needed him um, and will continue to do that, I, I think that's impressive. I like Dan Mullen for – any type of quarterback. I, I just think what Dan Mullen can do with quarterbacks is really impressive, and he's going to continue to do that in their preparation for this season and then once they start playing the season. And I'm with you. I mean, I, when you look at returning quarterbacks, 
sometimes it can come out of nowhere and that always yeah. happens. And I, I do think Jamie Newman at Georgia is going to be interesting. It's just a matter of, you know, he's a transfer coming in. So you would think that especially with everything going on right now, Trask may have a little bit of an advantage just already kind of being in the system and being there. Um, but that's the thing. Florida's just got to get over that Georgia hump, kind of similar to LSU and Alabama and the SEC West. And they were right there last year in a lot of ways, yeah. but just it felt like they were still a little bit um, a little bit behind. But that's okay because I think this year may be the year for them and they, they really may have an advantage finally at that quarterback spot. They, Florida's been chasing just trying to find a good quarterback that can really get things done since Tebow, um, which yeah. is – that's been a long time. So they, they're looking for that, somebody to really step up at the, at the quarterback spot. You would think that, you know, whether it's trash or even somebody down the road, they're getting close to that with Mullen at the helm. Yeah, Tebow was my time, so I know it was, in fact, <laughs> a long time ago. Hey, Laura, we always appreciate the time. Uh, we look forward to it every time you're coming on. I know our listeners almost demand for you to come on at least once a month, so we do appreciate your time as always. Hey, y'all know where to find me. So anytime you need, you know, like the soundtrack of a barking dog in the background, yeah. maybe a crying baby, or maybe me just like falling down, wh whatever you need, I am here for you. Um, call me anytime. Hey, the organic interviews are the best, and we don't mind it at <laughs> all. So, hey, again, thanks so much. Uh, enjoy watching you and continue doing what you do. Thank you, guys.